So you know how I'm constantly telling you guys it never snows here? <laughs> well, you know, it would seem the weather has turned. Um, so I guess now we're proper getting winter weather. Good job I've already been thinking about how I deal with really cold winter temperatures in my garden and protect my plants. And I'm planning some seed sowing this month. So what about that when it's really cold? So let me catch you up on the story so far. I work with gloves on. So here's what's happening then. <laughs> it has been unseasonably warm up until now. We have had a few frosts, but not nearly as many as we'd normally have. And the, generally the temperature, especially during the day, I'm going to use the words quite warm because it's been about 9 or 10 C which is crazy for this time of year. But there has been a weather alert. As of tonight, those temperatures have to start to dip. Now, generally, everything I have planted outside of my garden is hardy in my garden, so it generally survives. As long as you're a bit sensible, like you don't try and harvest it while it's frozen or while the ground's frozen. But I'm just gonna add a little layer of protection because, you know, I want to experiment with something. You know I like a good experiment. So I am going to turn this bed into a little mini polytunnel. And I've got some polytunnel material to do it. What I need to do though is get it measured up so that I know what size I need. Now ideally this is a two-man job, but um, it's far too dark after work to be doing this kind of thing. So I'm on my lunch break doing this on my own, just doing the maths. So I've got this stuff. Basically, what I'm doing is just putting a plastic layer over the top. Um, all sorts of plastic layers you can use. I've got the actual stuff that goes on the polytunnels or the hoop houses you see. Um, I just got this online. Ugh. You get different types, like different thicknesses. Um, which I suppose, depending where you are, might be something you want to think about. Mine's is kind of a medium thickness, because, like I say, we... I'm not expecting we'll go down below minus seven. It's happened occasionally, but it's unusual. Ah, there's a crease I can follow. There are much more professional and brilliant ways you could do this and it could be perfect and exact. I'm just trying to get this done on my own fast enough to get this covered before I have to go back to work. So this is not a perfect example of how to do this. Squeakiest substance known to man, but this is awesome, so this is not going to get wasted. I can make cold frames out of this, I can make hot boxes, can use it for all sorts of stuff. And if I'm careful, it's all going to be reusable for next year because it's really good heavy duty stuff. What I need to do now is get this roughly in place um, and then I've got these clips that I'm going to use to hold it in. They're U-shaped clips that fit over the top of these pipes and just hold it in place. Um, again, you can do this and you can just staple it because you know I've got the frames on the nets. So I could do this and just staple it in place and it'd be all lovely and neat but it's less likely for me to be able to reuse this in the same way because it'd be damaged. This is a much more temporary way of doing it because this is temporary. It's only going to be for a few months. 
um, and you can take these nets off to do it and you probably would get a better job if you did but they're all burst anyway and going to get replaced and I'm just as it keeps saying I'm trying to get this done really quick So basically, I'm getting it in place, I'm using these to secure it. I'm going to try and keep it as tight as I can, but it's not going to be perfect. But tight as I can, so that if we do get lots of rain, snow's less likely, but lots of rain, I don't want little pockets it can be sitting in, because that's weight. So as tight as I can get it. So I guess that snow did come then after it all. It's not a lot, thankfully. It didn't snow for too long. We'll see how it goes. But I got this in place, and as you can see, there's snow sitting on it that I can knock off because one of the things we need to think about is the light. And obviously we don't want to leave this snow sitting on there because it's blocking the light to the plants that are inside. But just quickly then, so this is about the beds outside of my garden, the plants that are grown outside. Now, I did say that the things that are planted outside are hardy in my garden, so they should pretty much stand up to most, if not all, of winter, provided we don't get a really harsh winter. But the idea of this is just to give that little bit extra protection. It'll obviously protect from wind chill and frost, which is excellent because that's a big issue for us. But also, this plastic covering on here acts a little bit like my greenhouse does during the day when the sun's out it's going through and this plastic is holding a little bit of that heat in and then tonight when it gets cold and the sun goes down it'll take longer for that heat that's held in there to dissipate it'll keep the soil in there a little bit warmer for a little bit longer and just generally help the plant now if you're in the States, you might recognise this. I've heard it said. One layer of protection like this can actually increase the growing zone inside by one and a half. So let's see if I can get this right. That means if you're in a growing zone six, it would take you to 7.5, seven and a half. Is that right? So it might be something you want to think about if you really do struggle. Like I say, for me, it's an experiment to see, is that true? And also, what difference does it make? So as usual, because you know I love my experiments, I'm going to hang my little thermometer inside there. So that's my little Bluetooth thermometer. This way, I can keep an eye on this and compare it to the temperature generally outside in the garden. So that's for the garden. I said I was going to be doing some seed sowing this month. That is something we'll talk about in the greenhouse. I best knock the snow off then. I didn't move quick enough. It's a tad chilly and it's quite slippy. Okay, kind of obvious it's a different day. It's now Saturday. This video is going out to you guys on the Sunday. So for you, it's yesterday. Today for me. Mm, yeah, timey-wimey. But anyways, we spoke about outdoors. So I spoke about how I deliberately grow with the season and grow with my garden. I mentioned this in that whole winter growing video I did where I talked through my top five tips for growing over winter. And number one was grow with your season. My first tip then is to grow with the season. It is fantastic that right now I'm still getting the last of my tomatoes, my peppers, my aubergines, etc. But I can't honestly expect to grow those in winter. In other words, you've got to accept the temperatures in your garden and the environment in your garden Unless you're going to have a heated greenhouse, you're not going to be able to grow things that don't like that temperature and environment. 
So for me, I'm only growing things that I know will cope with frosts, okay? So I've got my mustards, my tatsoi, my pak choy, my broccoli rab, chard, all of that kind of stuff. I do have some flowers out there that I am going to have to bring into the greenhouse and that's the job I'm going to get done later on today. That'll be another video. But for in here then, I said, even though it's December, I'm going to start my seed sowing, okay? Now, not everyone's going to be doing what I'm doing and that's okay, this is my thing, but as you guys know, last year I grew onions for the very first time and I grew them from something called sets which are little immature onions that had been started the previous year. This year, I'm going to grow from seed because I found an awful lot of them bolted last year, which is a common issue if you grow from sets. So I'm going to grow from seed this year. I'm going to grow a few different varieties and I'm growing them, well, not growing them, I'm sowing them on Boxing Day. It's a bit of a tradition. Um, you'll hear this loads of the guys on YouTube, so especially Steve at Greenside Up. He'll be doing his seeds on Boxing Day as well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's a kind of an old gardener's thing you do. There are set dates in the year. It just makes it easy to remember for doing things. Boxing Day for onion seeds is one of them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And of course, I'll bring you guys along. Um, but it means I'm getting in here sorted to do that. So now, first things first, I need to take these off and I'm going to regret it. First things first then, I need to sort out my seeds because I have already started buying all my seeds for next season. So all my vegetables and loads of flowers for next season, same as always. I need to get them sorted out so I'm ready to go. And then I'm going to tell you about what's behind me and some more. Just in case anyone's wondering, two things in the seeds. No, I don't have a single seed company I recommend. Um, I buy a lot from Premier Seeds Direct here in the UK. I buy from Mr Fothergills in the UK, even though I struggle to say that name. Somebody will ask, this is my seed storage box. You guys, if you've been here a while, have seen me use this heaps. It's actually a photo storage container. It's not for seeds at all. Um, you can get them on Amazon, which is where I got it. Um, you can get them in your hobby stores, all that kind of thing. They tend to be cheaper if you get them in the hobby stores rather than Amazon. Um, if you want to look at these, as always, on our website, and there's a link in the description of every video, I've got all the links on Amazon to the things I've bought if you want to go and look and do a nosy. But you know what it's like, that way you can go and see it, but you don't have to buy it from there, it's up to you guys. Okay, um, so that's that. If you want to know more about this kind of thing, I actually did a video last year, which is my personal top 10 gardening gifts, the things I think are the best thing. And you'd be surprised they're all really, really budget friendly. So I will put that link at the end of this video if you want to go and see that and find out more about this stuff as well. But back to this. So let's talk about this then. Well, it's actually two things I'm going to talk about. The main thing is this, okay? With these temperatures now, it can be very, very hard to get seeds to germinate in these temperatures. But what I can do is I can try and cheat Mother Nature and do it in here. And this is how I do it. Let me just move things. This is what's called a heat mat, okay? Um, this is the super cheap solution for doing this. Um, I think this was about 20 pounds, this one. Um, and basically all it does is it has a heating coil in there and it is a gentle heat from the bottom and it will just warm the soil of any pots, trees, etc., that are sitting on it, okay? Now you can see, I've got it on this kind of polystyrene mat kind of thing, because obviously I don't want to lose all that heat down from through my slatted bench. So I put this on so that it's a little bit of insulation. So I'm using all that heat that I can. This is a second level. So it's just a propagator like we use in spring. But I've got it on the heat mat so that it is generating a little bit of warmth at the bottom to keep those plants that are in there a little bit warmer. And you can see it's all condensation because it's that little bit warmer in there. Okay, so that's one way you guys can do this. If you like me and you don't have a sunny window still, that's an option. Okay, now here's the thing I keep talking about at the minute, you don't really need to water all the stuff in the greenhouse or the garden. Um, it's just, like I say, the air here is just pretty much wet. The ground is wet. There's just moisture everywhere. 
stuff doesn't dry out and the plants aren't using as much of it. So I pretty much am not watering anything in here. This is different. Keep an eye if you're using a heat mat because obviously this water in the soil will evaporate. So just keep an eye. OK, so that's stage one. I'm going to show you um, something we call the beast because it's a much bigger version than this. So this then is the beast. And you can see basically it is just a much, much bigger version of this and the heat map. There are a few differences, but it's cosmetic really. This has an insulated base that has the heating element built in. So you don't need a separate heating element. Gang, it comes with a thermostat and you can see the little cable that is inside here and I'll put that into the soil that's in here and it'll monitor the soil temperature because that's what you're doing you're not more you're not monitoring the temperature of the ambient air around it you're monitoring the soil that's the big thing but there you go that's that the big difference between this and these other than the big difference the fact that it's huge um this has these tiers that you build and you can buy extras so it's sitting on one just now because that's plenty for seed sown but those of you who've been around a while already know this because you've seen it last year i will use this in december for things like my onion seed in january i will sow my pepper seeds and my aubergine seeds into this in february march i can be sowing things like my tomato seeds i can be sown a lot of my flowers that I sow, that kind of thing. So you're going to see this out quite a bit in the next few months worth of videos. Now here's the thing. You need to think about, I've talked about heat, but you also need to think about light, okay? I have found it is not nearly light enough here for a lot of the growing I do early on in the season. So that's the December, January, February, early March stuff. It's not nearly light enough. We just don't get enough hours in the day of light, okay? So I have extra lights that sit on top of this to help. You may be growing on a super sunny windowsill and don't even have to think of it, but it's one of the things I do, so it would be remiss of me not to mention it to you guys. But this is the most important thing. I'm showing you guys what I'm doing, okay? And you know I grow a lot. I sow, well, this year actually, I will be sowing almost everything from seed this year, apart from, I think, maybe one tuber I've bought for a dahlia. So, yeah, I do an awful lot of seed sowing. I grow an awful lot of flowers, an awful lot of veggies. So I will make use of this. You may not. You need to think about what you're going to be doing and what you realistically need, because this kind of kit is not cheap, whereas these kind of things are much, much cheaper. If you're grown indoors, one of these on a window ledge is awesome, okay? And also, this is electric, so think about that. I'm having to pay to run this as well, run the heat. So if you don't need to do that, you don't need one of these. It's about you thinking about what you need, because I'd much rather you guys took time and thought about what you needed than waste money buying something just because you've seen I've got it, because you may not need it. I just wanted to show this for the guys that might find it interesting. So we have put some poly wrap over the top of one of my raised bed covers, the hoop house, and that'll do a little bit of protection from frost, from wind chill. Excellent. Let's, we'll keep that going. I've got thermometers in there. I'll keep you updated on any kind of difference it makes. I've got the greenhouse, which is the souped up version of that, and I've already told you the difference it makes in here. It really is doing a great job of beating the frost and the cold in here. It's not heated, so it's not going to get hot in here but it's usually a degree or two warmer than the outdoors. And then the next level up is using heat mats or heated propagators for those things you want to get going that wouldn't germinate in this type of temperature. And as I said, come January, February, March, I'll actually be growing in here. So these tiers that I told you about, I'll be putting it up to three tiers high, so it's about that high. And I will be bringing my peppers and tomatoes on in this basically until they get too big and then they go into the greenhouse and then I heat my greenhouse and only then and that's usually the end of April so I've already said then I'm starting my seed sowing at the end of this month so I will be bringing back the monthly 
what I'm growing and sowing the videos and I'll be taking you through the seeds I'm sowing that month taking you through everything I'm growing in the garden how it's doing all of that what I want to know from you guys then a couple of bits of info comment down below and tell me are you sowing lots of seeds this year at any point throughout the year are you mostly veggies mostly flowers or a mix of both and are you new to this or relatively new to this and if you are just put a little thing in the comment when you're telling me about what you're going to be sown and grown. Let me know the kind of things you're worried about that you think would be handy to know more about. That's it. Let me know in the comments below. So since you guys stayed with me this far then, I'm guessing this is a video you quite like. So if so, hit that like button. It does two things. It helps YouTube know that you like this channel and it tells me that you like this type of content for when I'm planning everything. But since you stuck this far and I'm guessing you're going to want more, the video I promised you about my top tips for getting gifts for the gardener in your life is this one here. And an extra bonus, I've got a playlist of all sorts of videos for new gardeners and seed sown right here. So guys, enjoy and I'll see you next time. See you, folks.